The Tumblr is tightly knit. Though it's been expressed in different ways over the years, the people on Tumblr have always had a connection with each other. Lots of in-jokes, in-groups, and in-fighting. But just enough to stick together and support others. Man, what a great place to scam people. Many have exploited this community in the past, especially when Tumblr culture was new and naive. This means that there's a long and interesting history of swindlers and the money they stole from the platform. Hey everyone, I'm Red Woods, and I'm finally back at it again. Join me as we go through four of the most infamous Tumblr scams, how they all tricked the internet, and how eventually, they all amounted to nothing. Something you have to understand about old Tumblr was that it was much more intimate. Nowadays, there's a sense of ironic humor about it, but back in the day, it was a tight community of people who were often outcast for their interests. This is why when a random group of people on March 11th, 2013 suggested there should be a convention just for them, the idea was taken seriously. Originally called TumbleCon USA and changed to DashCon for legal issues, an initial Kickstarter proved the idea had merit. The problem is, nobody knew the owners. So they pretty much just gave money to three random people. Megan Ellie, Roxanne Schweiderman, and Kane Hopkins. Everything was set into place at the beginning. It would be an annual event held in Chicago with roughly 5,000 people attending. There were deals with bands popular to Tumblr at the time too, like Steam Powered Giraffe. Along with being associated with a charity, it seemed like this could really work out, and people began investing quickly. <sighs> However... There was some drama between the three organizers, because of course there was. As deadlines got closer, Roxanne was pretty much the only one doing anything. Meg and Kane just kind of relaxed, I don't even know. Furthermore, they didn't like Roxanne because in an effort to carry the team, she had to come across as bossy. Eventually, because of all of this drama, things fell apart. Investors dropped out, steam-powered giraffe dipped, and people weren't even refunded. SVG was a huge driver of interest in the con, so when they left, that was a huge hindrance to sales. By the time summer rolled around, only 500 people were booked, the majority of panels left, and the mismanagement only worsened. But the show still had to go on. And on July 11th, 2014, it did. Empty rooms, underwhelming infrastructure, and honestly liminal space energy. Like, look at this ball pit picture and tell me it doesn't look like something from the back room. Drama continued, staff was underprepared and undertrained, and things looked pretty bleak. But it still ran relatively smoothly. Until 9 p.m. Since there were so few people, the trio now didn't have the funds to pay for the hotel's booking expenses, and the hotel wanted them out. The organizers gathered everybody into a room and announced this. Any little bit of, like, helps. Ten dollars, one dollar, anything helps for us to stay here until the rest of the weekend. Fortunately, this is something that has been completely out of our control. This is not something that we foresaw, and this is not something that we expected by any sort of means. Nobody knew if this was real or if it was forged, but needless to say, everybody was panicking. Outrage, worry, and solidarity was all it took for them to just barely raise enough money. But it wasn't entirely the community's contributions, because apparently they also cancelled some of the panelists' rooms to pay for it, without their permission. Either way, the con would go on, but some weren't happy about it. There were a lot of accusations after that stating they forged the event to extort money. They said they did actually need $17,000, but by examining PayPal transactions, they only owed a few thousand and took the rest. Later in the day, after another group of highly anticipated guests left, they updated the rules to say that they got to keep your money and announced the event wouldn't happen. Any semblance of order was killed with this. The rest of the convention after this was a shell of its former self. If there even was a former self. Nowadays, the first and last Tumblr Dashcon lives in infamy on the internet. Megan Kane fucking booted Roxanne from the project by calling her Voldemort. Mind you, they are 30. <laughs> and afterwards, get this, they were shooting for a Dashcon 15. <laughs> are you serious? They tried to censor all the Dashcon horror stories to promote this new one, but by the end of 2014, Dashcon was done for good. To this day, nobody has been refunded, and anyone who went will now unfairly be seen as stupid. This event single-handedly wiped out the desire for an intimate community space for Tumblr users. Ever since then, nobody has dared to bring up another large-scale proposal. And they certainly won't anytime soon. In 2011, Constable Suzanne Burke was investigating a call. It was about motorists feeding a bear cub at a local Newfoundland restaurant, and she was going to visit the area and halt the dangerous practice. When the bear unexpectedly appeared and startled her, this image was captured. It got popular, but then eventually faded into obscurity. That is, until a thread in early 2014 reignited the craze. There was a post mentioning how it would make a great show when the artist Lemon Tea Flower illustrated four fake screen caps to demonstrate this. Their work exploded, and all was going well. Even Burke took notice. But of course, it all had to come crashing down 
they made a Kickstarter. The asking price was $80,000, which is an insane amount, even for a medium as arduous as animation. There were also reports of foul play and mistreatment of animators, which eventually killed the excitement surrounding development. And now in the coffin, the head of the project was only 18. The last post about the project was eight years ago. Despite all the love and support it got when it was first being produced, it now lives on as one of the biggest and most infamous Tumblr scams in the history of the website. Tumblr has always been home to a lot of gay people. According to a 2020 Australian study, queer youth are almost five times more likely to use Tumblr than other youth. At least in Australia, I guess. Further findings show that most people were on the platform to connect with other queer people like them, especially with uncommon identities. This means that Tumblr has always been a place for representation, inclusion, and gay people drama. Ooh, my favorite. So, it was only a matter of time before someone made this post about two large yet overlooked queer communities. An asexual and pansexual become roommates and have wacky adventures. The show is called All or Nothing. Get it? Because pansexuals like all genders and asexual. Okay. The joke took off and people began to imagine what the show would actually be like. One reply said that the pansexual would be really shy and the asexual would be super outgoing, which is the deliberate flipping of the stereotypes about both groups. I love that. Someone drew cover art for it and eventually Tumblr's urge to make everything real encapsulated the website. That desire for proper representation of pansexuality and asexuality made it very alluring. An Indiegogo page was created in June of 2014 to create a web series based on the property but it was definitely unprofessional. They were asking for a very small amount of money considering their lofty production goals, there was pretty much no plot besides their ace and pan, and most of the funding was allocated to merch and paraphernalia. And yet, even though it was a poorly conceived idea, it achieved seven times its funding goal. Oh my god. People wanted to see this bad. But that was it. After surpassing their funding goal, people heard nothing at all about All or Nothing. The Indiegogo poster would later clarify that she and her team were just a bunch of teenagers and their expertise was low. Drama within the groups cut the staff from eight to three. And by falsely trusting a family member with her money, the finances disappeared. After this, she panicked and deleted all of her social media accounts. There was immediate disappointment and accusations and later on it would turn into memes. This event actually fueled an ongoing sentiment against asexual people in 2016. While other projects were still made and completed based on the premise, the most infamous one is definitely the crowdfunding campaign. And those who worked on it needed to distance themselves entirely from it. Just another cautionary tale about how ignorance and a good yet shallow premise can make a project that felt like everything amount to nothing. Tumblr's obsession with representation wasn't only limited to the queer community, as it also intersected with racial and cognitive portrayal. When you combine this desire with video game development, you get the Ark Project. The game revolved around the player being reincarnated as many different characters with different backgrounds to reconnect with someone named Haruka. This appealed to progressive Tumblr, especially in 2012, so the idea took off, and the elusive creator Riley would post about it. The thing is, Riley and her team were shady really shady. First, she was vague when describing the game's actual story or gameplay. She said this was because she knew old stuff would be changed to fit new ideas, but people took it as a red flag that there were no ideas. Second, the creator has a history of scamming people on the internet and was asking for $100,000 for this vague idea. The crowdfunding campaign only had pictures of the main characters along with them kissing, which... <laughs> I don't know about you, but that wouldn't be a very good reason for me to fund a $100,000 project. Lastly, three. Will there be non-conventionally attractive characters? There are black characters, masculine Asian characters, and trans women, as well as obviously disabled characters and fat ones. These sorts of people in real life are largely not considered conventionally attractive. Jesus. So, it turned out the creators might not have been the most progressive after all, especially not Riley. She's pretty much been racist to like every group of people, yes, including white people, and also homophobic, and transphobic, and used slurs against all of those groups, and dox people. Pretty much, she was meant for 4chan, not Tumblr. The project raised over $5,000, and Riley just just kind of stole the money. Soon, production would continue, but slow down significantly, ending in late 2014. Riley, to this day, still refuses to take any accountability for pandering and scamming minorities. While other Tumblr scams were a product of negligence or ignorance, this is one of the most openly antagonistic scams on the platform. It will forever live as a deceptive, problematic ripoff that seems even worse as our world gets more progressive. There are many other Tumblr scams, of course, but those are the main four, to my knowledge. If you think I forgot some interesting Tumblr scams, feel free to leave some stories in the comments. Anyways, thank you for joining me on this journey. Always make sure to do research and invest your money carefully. You might waste it all on the next DashCon. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. See you guys later. Peace.